Hello everybody, welcome to this week's bonus podcast. How are you doing? How are you doing, Gemma? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm all right. We're both fine and we're going to be doing some listener questions today. Thank you everybody for writing in with your listener questions and you want to know all of our thoughts and ideas about (laughs) stuff. So we're going to, as always, take two of them today and see where it takes us. See how much we know, see how much we... um... Yeah, you don't need to prep, like... Just I don't say, know whether everybody understands the concept of listening to questions. It's very questions? complicated. <laughs> okay, well, we have got, uh, as I say, two questions today, and we're going to be starting off with a question from listener John. Um, he, who says, um, you're put in charge of producing a two-hander episode. You can choose any two characters from the 60 years, but it must bring about a resolution or add to an unresolved storyline. Which two characters would you choose? Which writer would you choose to script it? And what plot would it be based on? Wayne and Imran, because I want Wayne to admit that he hid the report under the mattress. Straight in there with an answer, Gemma. Do you want to go? We we, we think we found a bit of crucial evidence this week. If you've been on our Twitter page, you might know this. Has been unearthed in the matter of the missing health and safety report (laughs) from the factory that killed Rana. And as you might remember, Imran used to have a sister, and now she's dead. And at one point, he was rather annoyed about this, and it seemed to be sort of rather a bit of a priority for him to to discover the secret. You know, over two years, your priorities can change, can't you? Then, Sometimes you can just forget about things like that. Wayne, who is an old foster son of Roy and Haley's, returned to the street as the person who was doing the health and safety report to explain why the factory roof collapsed. And he produced a report which then mysteriously went missing from his car and one of the prime suspects was Imran. But was later... It? I can't remember anything I think about it. Was. I just remember it was a big, big he, thing two years ago. I think he even ago. got it was a bit of a joke. hauled into the police station to be um, <laughs> well, questioned about Toya where... Toya found it went. underneath... I was just guessing oh, sorry. that. Sorry. <laughs> at, at one point, Toya and Leanne were sharing a flat and Toya decided to change the bed sheets on Leanne's bed, which is the grossest thing I can imagine doing <laughs> for someone else. I mean, I don't, I'm not close, I don't have a sister, but if I did, I think I would respect her by not changing her bed sheets. But anyway, she changes the bed sheets, and underneath the bed, so this is Leanne's bed, was the, the health report. and safety report. And this report, then it was suspected that Nick had hidden it under there, but when we watched our old episodes of Coronation Street. We're currently on the 2000s. And right at the very beginning, Yeah, but Wayne, this, was, this was Christmas 2000, wasn't it, we watched the other day. Wayne is given a gift. Now listen, bear with me. I know we've been talking about this for about two minutes now. <laughs> Wayne good. Was, was gifted a book about dinosaurs. No, well, I thought it was about um, African animals or something. Because they bring this up again, don't they? Some kind you of get... natural history book by Roy... And he says, oh, thanks very much. I'll hide this under my mattress, which is where I'll put everything I don't want people to steal. (laughs) So obvious now to me that 20 years later, Wayne hid, he stole the report himself and hid it under... We, when we were watching that, it was just like three to three or four days ago, wasn't it? Yeah. We both looked like, at each other we and thought exactly we were watching the same it. Thing. We both, yeah, we didn't say anything. We just looked at each other like, "Well, there That's you so go." Funny. Now the thing is, though, like as a, um, when Wayne came back, obviously played by a different actor. He was played by who was it called? Adam Barlow, the actor who played him a few years ago. I thought it was the same actor. No, it was a different actor. He had a horrific name, um, and he. I forgot what I was going to say. Oh yeah, he had this book, this animal book that he, he he brings it out to Roy and says, "Oh, I remember when you gave me this." So the writers of the Curry from two years ago must have looked back and said, "Oh, what what can we you know get from Wayne's past to incorporate yeah. into current storylines?" So they must have seen that thing about. They under must the have bed. seen the same scene. <laughs> How Wayne got this um, thing underneath the, the Leanne's mattress, I don't know, but it's well, the sort of thing that could come out. The only thing that makes in a sense two panda is a is a further revelation that's going to rock the street. Well, no, let me explain, because okay. you're not even going to let me explain, go are you? Then. Go on, oh yeah. The revelation. Yeah, I didn't know you had one. You got well, What's the revelation? You had to listen very carefully to what Wayne said originally. What? I put it under my mattress. Mm. My mattress. <laughs> His mattress. His and Nick's. Here, Nick, having an affair. <laughs> Nick All and Leanne more like, he's an ex-customer. Yeah, I don't know why I went to Nick first. <laughs> <laughs> guess I'm more open-minded than you are. Yeah, maybe, maybe. So, obviously, yeah, Wayne's been bonking Leanne and Nick or, or, or one or the other. Or maybe Toya, and that's why she decided to um, she change it. the sheets. 
But she found it. Yeah, but she... Did. Yeah, but she didn't know we were watching her. <laughs> anyway, yeah, sorry. That's my two-hander. So that's the end of that <laughs> So who question. is it? Wayne and Imran. Not Wayne and Nick, not Wayne and Toya. You want a Wayne and Imran two-hander. I yeah. I think if Wayne was going to have a two-hander with anyone, I'd probably say Roy. Um, just because, you know, they've got the history and everything. But there's quite a few unresolved so mysteries from that particular story. The, the, um, for example, um, a Gary and Kelly one-hander, where he tells her that he killed one-hander. her One-hander. One-hander. <laughs> well, that's what he calls it. <laughs> yeah, um, Gary and Kelly. Yeah, I mean, it's got to come out, where, hasn't where it? Where he it's sort of so says, sorry, I killed your dad. Yeah. Um, there were loads of points where Pat and somebody else could have had uh, a two-hander during the Pat feeling reign of terror. Yeah. I mean, imagine if the whole episode with Michael was Michael dying and uh, Pat... Yeah, I mean, there's, so we, there has been... The thing is, with Coronation Street and two-handers, they've not done very many in the past, and there's been a couple of extra-long scenes that have had two people in. Let me just give you a bit of a history lesson. I don't know whether well, we're talking to Gemma or the listeners here. What? Let's even just say, what is a two-hander? Go on, then. No. Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, 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 an episode that's only got two characters in. I gave you a shot and you just even screwed it up immediately. Yeah. An episode or two. Had, we, we've got, so it's a half hour we've episode. We've got five minutes into this. and um, Listen, it's a half an hour where the whole show is just two characters it could, it could be longer. It can be longer than half an hour because Coronation okay. Street's first episode that was a two-hander was the, uh, the Millennium episode that had Curly and Raquel in. Raquel's which, back! Which, again, we, we watched... Um, that's, a, that's a meta in-joke. Yes, it is. Um, that we watched that like three or four weeks ago, didn't we? And that was a fantastic. That was like that's, that's one of my favourite Coronation Street episodes ever. The thing about the two handers is you, it, it gives enough time for the dialogue to breathe. It means that you can really get under the skin of the characters that are in there. It's not like right, we got to say what we got to say. We have got three minutes to do it or, or or less usually, and then we're out to another scene. This um, it's it's proper character development. Yeah. Um, so that there was that one. And then also in 2007, there was a two-hander between Tracy and Deirdre. And this was on the eve of Tracy's trial, I think, for after she'd clonked um, Char- Charlie Stubbs on the head and she confesses to Deirdre that she did it on purpose. I barely... I, I don't really... I can't say I don't remember it. We must have watched it and we must have remarked on it at the time that it was a two-hander, but I don't think we were so you know deep into the Coronation Street fandom at that point. We might not have been expecting it. I I, I really don't know. I'm kind of looking forward to seeing that one again. So but, in the whole history of Coronation Street, there have only been two two-hander episodes. Yeah, but th- there's been some that have had some reduced cast, like um, in the Richard Hillman story, there are a couple of episodes that um, uh, that had like four characters in. There was one that had... So can I um, just say, so this was like single storyline episodes. Episodes, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. a similar concept, yeah. but not exactly the same as a two-hander. Well, this this one in 2002 had only Audrey, Archie, Richard and Gail in. And they were throughout the whole of the half an hour, they were the only characters. And that was an episode where Audrey and Archie realised that Richard might have killed his wife, Patricia. And then there was another one, like three months later, which had... That was almost a two-hander. It was Gail and Richard. It's the Norman Bates for the briefcase episode where she realises, like, the extent of his villainy. And I think Sarah and David were, like, at the top of the stairs or something. They, uh, as far as I remember, and it is quite a long time ago <laughs> since I watched it, like, 18 years, they barely had any dialogue. They must have had a little bit. Um, but that was that was as good as a two-hander, really. Um, and then a couple of years ago, we had that episode, I don't know if you remember it, which was part of the Sinead storyline, which only had Ken, Daniel, Sinead, Peter, and then a couple of guest cast, like there was a nurse or something that was in it. And that was the episode where Sinead um, was, had, a, had a cancer diagnosis and then she refused an abortion. It was still a good year, I think, before she died. Um, because she she gets better, doesn't she, for a little bit, and then it comes back again. So they almost count, but not quite. There's also been, like, and I'm going from what is on Coropedia at the moment, thank you very much, Coropedia, as always, for <laughs> being my my um, my memory. Um, so there was one in, there was a scene um, that was, like, seven minutes long in 1964 between Jerry and Myra Booth, and this is when he confronted her after finding how much she'd been spending, because she was, like, a catalogue freak, wasn't she? <laughs> so he has, a, he has a seven-minute-long go at her in 64. <laughs> then in 68, and I remember us watching this one, there was an um, episode where the second half of an episode was dedicated purely to Elsie and Len, and this is after oh, Elsie wow. had married... Um, 
what's his face, Steve Tanner, gone off to America and then come back. Yeah. And then she spends the this. second half of the episode basically offloading on to Len about why she's come back and how awful it was in America and how Steve's changed, yada, yada, yada. That <laughs> no was a offense, brilliant no offense. episode because, I mean, Pat Phoenix and Peter Adamson, both brilliant actors. And they were per- they were perfectly cast. Yeah, t- certainly. And the chemistry between those two is electric. So having... I mean, let's say 15 minutes, it's probably yeah. less than that. Just I dedicated think... to them was amazing. And again, we weren't expecting that when we when we watched it last year. I think one of the best things that Corey did with those two is never putting them together, really. Even though they did, didn't they? <laughs> they were kind of I don't remember you anymore. Know what I, mean? I don't know. Um, and then there was in 1970, um, again, this is on Corypedia, there was a six minute long scene between Elsie and Alan where they kind of muse on the fact that they've been both failures in life. And then just recently in March of this year, we had that really long, was eight minutes or so, Fizz and Tyrone scene, which the whole, the, the his affair with Alina comes out. Or no, had he, had he had an affair at that point? Or was he just, you know, fancying an affair or something? But it's when he reveals to Fizz they that he's got these in, feelings. In the garden, yeah, that's right. They? That's right, he's got these feelings and he's had the kiss with Alina, um, which again was a brilliant episode and and we knew that that was coming, but just sitting there and being able to wallow in this super long scene with just two great actors, great characters in all of these cases actually, apart from maybe Jerry and Myra, that wasn't so 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 fussed on Myra, Um, getting, just yeah, giving them the chance to... You know, it's giving us the chance to delve underneath their skin. It's brilliant. So, when... so it's really interesting, and perhaps it might not have come across um, so much if you're just enjoying the show like a normal person, unlike <laughs> we do. But what, but the Fizz and Tyrone um, scene, the eight minute long scene was really actually quite remarkable. Yes, yeah, you don't get things like that very often. And no. that I think that was pretty much a full half of an episode. Wasn't it? I, I don't remember, but I, yeah, I just remember sitting there watching it and thinking, "This, this is gold." Or still, this it's one of my, you know, my top scenes of the year for sure. Um, so, if we're thinking about Coronation Street's history with two handers, that's as far as we've got so far. And if you compare it to EastEnders, um, they certainly lead the way in terms of getting these two handers out. They've had twenty two two handers so far, so it leaves Coronation Street in the dust. Really, this I think. Yeah. I think with a lot of things, Coronation Street doesn't like to be too experimental, and I don't know whether it hides behind the idea that no, this is the first, you know, first longest whatever you want to call it British soap. We 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 knows the way we does things, and and that's it. But I mean. The, you do get, you know, the occasional, you know, funny camera angle or bit of music that's added in. But generally, Coronation Street is quite traditional in the way that it's produced, isn't it? Unlike EastEnders, Coronation Street has a uh, sort of is beholden to its stakeholders in the form of advertisers and revenue. So from the point of view of being more experimental eastenders has a bit more leeway because the bbc is paying and uh, you know the um mm. you get your tv license, tv license you? holders have to pay every year yeah so they you know if if uh, you know a quarter of the people stop watching the thing is they can still justify it from for artistic integrity or mm. you know that there's a bit more freedom there from the from the only from the perspective of um not being, you know, having to explain to Argos why a million people didn't watch <laughs> See, what, their advert. What I don't know is whether Emmerdale and Hollyoaks have had many, any two-handers like this, but I do know that Emmerdale has been, I don't, I don't really know anything about Hollyoaks, I do know that Emmerdale has been somewhat experimental in the past, like I'm thinking of during the Ashley Dementia storyline when Kate Oates was in charge, um, and it was all like from his point of view and Coronation Street's never really done anything like that. I suppose the, the Carla Mental Breakdown episode was the closest so and obviously they are also beholden to their advertisers um but yeah eastenders have had 22 plus there's been apparently a fair amount of three handers four handers plus there's even been one episode in 2008 which just had one character for the whole episode it was a doc cotton's um yeah episode i think i remember the buzz when this happened yeah and and, and basically the premise of it was that she was um recording her her thoughts, her deepest desires, her her, her reflections. I don't know or, or to or onto a tape which she was going to play to 
someone or other husband, maybe, I don't know about his standards either, who was um, in hospital at the time. And so it was literally just her monologuing for half an hour to a tape. And um, yeah, Coronation Street's obviously never done anything like that. And that was the same actress that just kind of left without telling them that... Yes, yes, that was June Brown. <laughs> She's like, I'm done, I'm off. I, I, did, a two, I did a single hand and no one's done that in the history of soap, so... So what John was asking for, and, and we, we kind of started with it and then reversed back on ourselves just to explain it a little bit more, was first the unresolved storyline. I have to say, the, the part of John's question where he says, who would you want to write it... I don't think I'm. I don't think either of us are particularly qualified to answer that one, are we? Because the the individual writers of Coronation Street are still, after all this time doing the podcast, not really anything I that we pay much attention them. to. We obviously we we'll, we we know um, Ellen Taylor because she was a guest on the podcast, and sometimes if her name flashes up at the beginning of the oh. episode, we go, "Oh, Ellen Taylor." But generally, I don't look to see who writes episodes. And no, then you've got it? the likes of. Um, uh, Damon Rochefort uh, and so on, so, so these big, bigger names. Um, it's one of those things where it really is a bit of a question of personal preference and debate as to whether you think it is of benefit to have writers that are distinctive and individual yeah. or if they really all should just be very much... Yeah, house style. Of stock, yeah. Because I mean, jo- Jonathan Harvey is another one that you can Jonathan sometimes Harvey, see Jonathan I would style. call him Notorious... And also infamous in the correct use of the term. Because some I've seen people using this more and more to mean very, very famous. But it means notorious. Some people do not like his scripts and some people think they're brilliant. Mm. So I, do, I don't... I, I find honestly, I don't have... sometimes his humour is um is pretty good. Oh yeah, I do as well sometimes. And, and sometimes... But he's definitely one who puts a lot of jokes in. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes he'll put like a recurring gag occasionally throughout an episode. Yeah. Like there was that episode with... um. Uh, wasn't there, there like a uh, a skip outside Tracy's house at one point and there's a lampshade in it and people were recognising this lampshade and, and it turned yes. out that it was all people who if you, had yeah, various if you sexual it, conquests yeah. of Tracy. That was really clever. Um, but yes, yeah, so definitely sometimes people don't like his work, but I, I, I don't want to answer that part of the question particularly. Apart from to say, I would... I think I'd quite like it if Darren Little came back and wrote an episode at some oh, point. Okay. Um, just be- uh, as well now he works for EastEnders, but this well, this is a person who him. used to be um, a Coronation Street archivist, and then went on to being a writer and everything. But I- I'm going to put that writing bit to one side. I was I'll do think, it. I was How about to- that? I'm-, I'm very reasonable. <laughs> you got good rights, have you? Mm. I wonder whether we could um, crowdsource. You know, if we got all the Con- Conversation Street fans together, we could do it like um, Twitch plays Pokemon. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was it'd be about five hours long. Um, I'm trying to think, I, and I was trying to think, and I'm sure there are lots, but I couldn't think of very many unresolved storylines, which was the other part of um, of John's email. Well, also, we the, an un, unasked part of the question is who would direct it, and obviously Matt Hilton would direct it, and the whole thing would be done from the ceiling. <laughs> he has got his own uh, particular <laughs> style, hasn't he? Yeah, he um, unresolved storylines you were so, saying yeah so I mean there's obviously the, Nick, the, the Rick Neal and stuff <laughs> I don't know whether there is or whether I've forgotten and, and Coronation Street loads. probably likes you to forget sometimes there's don't literally they? loads there, 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 there's one thing that's been, that gets dangled once every six months or so which is the fact that Gary knows about what happened to Callum so the fact that Kylie killed Callum with a wrench they yes. Sarah Lou um, David and Kylie kind of conspired together to bury him in the granny annex um, but uh, uh, as of you know summer 2021 the the general population of Coronation Street believed that it was Tony Stewart Jason Grimshaw's dad who was the murderer so who would be good for that revelation well obviously not Kylie as she is dead um, I mean Sarah Louise got very um, she went a bit nuts over sectioned. it doesn't she yeah so and and I do think that Tina O'Brien would be able to hold um, a two hander, but who, 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 the question is who who does it them? who who does it get revealed to? Because yeah. the people that know about this at the moment are David, Sarah Lou, possibly Bethany. I can't remember. The closest and person Gary. left to Callum is probably Gemma. Sarah and Gemma. Uh, yeah, well, it doesn't. Because Gemma's so far removed from that drug dealing hanger on mm. of the dog and gun, yeah, that it wouldn't. I, I feel like she wouldn't. Um, 
I mean... Well, tell you what, though, there could be some really interesting conversations between the two of them about how being a mother changes you and, you know, and, and a sort of Gemma reflecting on her past and and sort of signing to Sarah about I mean, the, I'm sure years. Curry wouldn't be adverse were they to want to do another two-hander to putting, you know, just Sarah and Gary together. And I know they both know already... But they could be talking about it and he could be threatening to go and reveal it to someone. And mm. Because she's also got the secret about um, the fact that he killed Rick Nealon, doesn't she? She knows that yeah, he, she had him buried in the woods. That... She, she, she is. So I, I actually think that they could do an interesting two-hander with them. I'm, I, but because I'm, you know, I'm not, not, not and then I have never been a massive fan of the Sarah and Gary relationship. If Coronation Street were to say, we're going to do another two-hander, it's been, you know, 20 years since our last one, and it's going to be Sarah and Gary, I'd be like... Hmm. <laughs> no! <laughs> yeah, I mean, if, if Jason were to come back, yeah, he, he currently thinks that his dad is a murderer, yeah. or was a murderer. Putting Sarah and Jason together, I wouldn't mind they seeing. Because they, they, yeah, yeah, they, they were, they were married at one point. Weren't they? Oh, they were they going to be married? I can't remember. I remember Didn't he, he run out the toilet. Yeah, he did escape out the toilet window. <laughs> well, I can't remember whether they, uh, they went back and gave it another pop. Um, I, I'd quite like to see that, or, or I suppose linked to that, it could be like Sarah and Eileen, or, or oh no, Sarah and Eileen's the one I kept sort of. Thinking and going, mm, but nah. th- those two together. But Gail and Eileen. Now, there's a two hander I'd like to see, because uh, they've got massive history, haven't they? You're spanning like, twenty yeah. years of of hatred and hair pulling. I, I'm also trying to think of like under what circumstances, and it really reminds me of the scenes of the Fresco siege where Mike and Ken were locked together in the, yeah. in the storage room. Yeah, they like, would have had a great together. two-hander. Now, imagine if Sarah, if um, Eileen and Gail were sort of held hostage somewhere together, and then ha- but how would neither of them know that this has happened? So No, no. I mean... How would, would, we, would we see a scene before in a previous episode where individually they'd both been told by their respective... I don't think necessarily Eileen needs to have been told beforehand. Just Sarah needs to have told Gail. No, but, but how then... would wouldn't if I was locked in a room with Eileen, I wouldn't go. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, like, how much would Eileen care? Because she I know it used care. to be her, you know, the the father of her son. But if Gail was to tell him, he'd be like, oh, okay, she don't need care if Jason was back and Jason, you mm. know, cause, uh, because then we'd. Because also, as a view, as viewers, we also need to be emotionally invested in whatever, whatever she's feeling. And if we'd seen her with Jason, and Jason had come back and gone, "Oh, ma'am, it's all gone wrong in Thailand. I was so messed up about my dad. I can't believe that. You know, am I a murderer as well? And you know, and all this kind of mm. stuff. And then she got gets locked in with Gail, who's like, "By the way, <laughs> my whole family killed. Yeah, killed the guy that your son's dad's been accused of." Mm. I don't know, it's very convoluted. I don't think it's very, it's very no, but strong. The, the opportunity to get Gail and Eileen together to do something would be brilliant. I mean, I, there's, there's so many characters that I'd like to put together for a scene, I think just but having, it doesn't necessarily resolve an unresolved story. Yeah, though. just having Eileen and Gail together for half an hour and just, just to kind of put the whole feud to rest for good and then for the rest of the time on the street they just sort of tolerated like, well that's what happened with mike and ken didn't yeah. it because in the fresh go siege and this was in that was in 2000 wasn't it um they get yeah tied back to back together in the stock room um of, yeah. of, of the supermarket and um they, they have you know what three scenes maybe for the, for the first one they were able to escape their bombs and then they just um you know stand together because they're trapped in this room but this was a, an, another very very long-standing rivalry probably Corey's biggest rivalry oh, ever yeah definitely um, and that there was some cracking dialogue in there and they kind of grew a bit of respect for each other and a bit of understanding of each other and i think that's what these sorts of storylines really um yeah enable. that would have been a really good two-hander yeah. but when we watched it um i kind of ruined it for myself because i'm i'm a bit obsessed with the sh- with peep show i've watched that about four or five times all the way through because I, when I feel depressed, I just watch it. I don't know why. <laughs> <I don't... laughs> You've been depressed quite a lot. Though. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but when I was watching it, I suddenly realised that this is exactly how Mark and Jez from Peep Show would act. And Ken is obviously Mark 
and Mike is Jez, kind of. And, and when you're watching it, you could almost give the lines to those characters and turn it into a comedy when they're talking to each other. And there's like probably about five people that know what I'm talking about who are listening to this now. But if you do know what I'm talking about, watch the scenes because it is really funny. Mm-hmm. And you can almost imagine it being Peep Show. And now, when I see Ken, every now and then, in my head, I'm like, you are just a grown-up Mark. <laughs> you really are. Totally, totally. Um, with another story that's kind of ongoing at the moment that's still unresolved, obviously Seb's murder. Because yes, at some that's point... a big un. At some point, we're going to find out the truth of what happened with that. Um, so... I could see maybe having Kelly and Corey together as a two-hander. Kelly if we were... and Corey, okay. Yeah, well, because... I was thinking Nina and Kelly. Well, the the thing, it, yeah, it could. I'd rather that because I don't know whether two guest characters or whatever you want to call them yeah. of Kelly and Corey like wouldn't criminals. necessarily be able to to carry a two-hander. Or, or I'm not saying that the actors wouldn't be capable, obviously, because they're both very good good actors. But again, if Coronation Street are going to do something special as a two-hander, you want to have some long-term characters in. But then even Nina has only been in it for five minutes, hasn't she? But, yeah, I mean, it would be like in the bill when you have two criminals talking. Exactly. Not allowed. <laughs> so uh, how that's going to come out, I don't know. But that feels like it could be a two-hander material. Maybe they, get, would... maybe they get one of the six or seven-minute scenes. I really would like Nina and Kelly to talk. Yeah. I, w- I still don't... I still can't see how Kelly gets out of um, of what she did with without a massive retcon. It, for, from all the evidence that we have been presented with so far, she certainly isn't, you know, innocent, innocent angel in this. Yep. And, and having them have, having a discussion together, Kelly and Nina... And well, because the thing is, Kelly's Kelly's alibi kind of is going to be, of... oh, my mum was abusive and she used to hit me, so I'm a sad orphan. Nina's going to be like, well, my mum died. Yeah, my mum died. My dad died. I've been I've been bullied and and ostracised. And Kelly's like, oh, my dad's dead too. Maybe it depends when this that yeah. comes out. <laughs> um, It'd be interesting if Nina if Nina found out that. Um, her dad was dead. Yeah, that would be quite interesting. I can I don't imagine. Know how I can almost would, imagine but... Gary in a really twisted way, sort of comforting Nina, going, "Look, don't worry, I killed her dad." <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? How <laughs> Gary would be like, "There you go." It's like I remember when I was when I was really little. I was um I was in bed and I got stung by a bee, and I screamed my head off and ran downstairs. And I was crying on the sofa. My mom was cuddling me. And then my dad came in and he walked up to me and he held his hand out and on his hand was the bee because he'd obviously killed it for me. Yeah. And I just remember going, no, why? <laughs> and crying even harder. And my dad was like, what? I don't even know what you want now. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. I tried my best. Oh, your dad. I know. Um, <laughs> I feel that's one of the things. That, you know how sometimes you have a memory from your child and you feel bad about it? Yeah. I feel really bad about that. that poor B. I know. But I feel bad because my dad was like proud of himself. Instinct. Here you go, child. I vanquished <laughs> it for you. You don't need to worry about the B anymore. Never mind the B was going to die anyway. Uh, um, anyway, sorry. When, when they had the Seb storyline, they almost dedicated like two weeks just to that story earlier this year, though, couldn't they? It? So having... Um, Another one ha- might be having a, bit... a singer. Well, I don't know. I, I would say maybe getting it all out, something all out in the open in a single, in, in, in a two-hander would, could be I'll tell you what good. would also a be good. Hander. Not, yeah, not a two-hander, but a triple with Imran, Kelly and Toya. Yeah. I don't know what they talk about. Well, but... Kelly would have to confess. Yeah, a confession scene would be good. Where, and, where Toya uh, and Imran are sort of going, opposing. listen, Kelly... We, you know, we've we we're, we're really confident that we can um, help you here because we know that you definitely didn't do anything, and um, and then she can say, you know, well, what if I did? Yeah, and having Toya and Imran having two different reactions. Who who would want to tell the truth and who would want to keep it well, secret? Well, first of all, how Toya's... would they react? You know, wh- who would be the good cop and who would be the bad cop? Because for for you know emotional balance in a scene, one of they have to react differently. So I think Toya guess... would be more likely to want to keep it quiet. I think no, she's but a bit you're of a talking secret. about a different thing than I'm talking. Go on. So, so who would who would be like, you disgust me, you horrible monster? And who would be like, I feel so bad for you, stuck in this awful. I honestly think either of them could play that. I think they could. I think, I think they could. Oh no, the actors could, but the characters. You can imagine Toya, sort of saying 
gosh, I, you know, poor child, you've been through so much and now this, who knows how anyone would have reacted. Or she could also be like, listen, I was dragged up and I never did anything like this. <laughs> how dare you? How dare you sit there and take all the things that disadvantaged children wish they had? You know, yeah. we're here to support you. Your foster dad is a blimmin' lawyer trying to get you off of this charge, and you're sitting there going, you did it. Yeah, yeah. But then you also have the question of who is going to who's gonna say we should tell and who's not, because you could swap them around. So you could have... Toya saying, you're disgusting, but we must never tell anybody. And and that. Imran going, I feel so bad for you, but we have to tell the truth. I think Imran is more honourable and, and Toya yeah, has been... How dare you? Toya, Toya has been known <laughs> a known secret keeper in the well, past, the thing is, like though, with Ali. Toya's quite scrappy, isn't she? And she's seen the rough side of life. Mm. And I think when you have, you feel... Thing, I think Imran's the kind of person who, who feels like everything should be done by the rules because the rules have never failed me. Yeah. I think that people, you know, I think, you know, I'm stereotyping him here as a bit of a middle class kind of, you know, silver spoony kind of a guy. Mm. What do you think? Is that... Is yeah, that no, I, I think that would work. But no, I, I think, think that right. people who have those kind of privileged upbringings feel as though as long as you do what you're supposed to do in life, you'll always come out on top. Yeah. Whereas people like Toya, have, you know, will have experienced actually... You can do everything right and still, mm, mm. and still end up being a Battersby. <laughs> oh, so yeah, so that, that I quite like the idea of that. I, when I was having to think of um, of some other ideas of of unresolved stories from the past, one that kept sort of popping back into my mind, and I really, really would love to have some kind of resolution to this. And this is two major characters. Is God, we need to have Rita and Bet have a reconciliation <laughs> scene, don't we? Well, episode. That would actually be epic. I don't think they're right. They're up to it. I don't know who who the writers or the actors the or actors. both. I'm not sure. I, I mean, I Ju- Julie Goodyear doesn't want to do any more. I wouldn't. And, and Barbara wanna... Knox has only done minor roles for a while now, hasn't she? I wouldn't want to ask people to. It's very grueling. I think. Mm. Oh gosh, it would be. Yeah. Maybe I mean... we just computer generate them, like um, when they resurrected the poor corpse of Audrey Hepburn to sell chocolate. <laughs> but wouldn't that be amazing? Yeah. Because they, 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 were, they were pals, pals, up until 1995 when Bet tried to get some money off of Rita to buy the pub. Uh, and it was because and she... And Rita, Rita had agreed, kind of. She'd kind of semi-agreed. She hadn't said hadn't no. She? And, Re- and, and Bet had gone around telling everybody and then it got back to Rita and Rita just got her nose out of joint over it, really. Yeah. And somebody said something to her about it probably wasn't a good investment otherwise bet would be able to afford it herself i think it was elf maybe and then she said no i'm not doing it oh man and then that was the then end they, of bet yeah that that was and then and she swans out a couple of episodes later and when bet came back in 2002 2003 i it they, they didn't take the opportunity to rebuild those bridges now the idea had been that julie goodyear would come back in a more permanent basis and take over the rovers so at some point this would have happened but <clears throat> as things stand at the moment bet and rita long-term friends have now been enemies for 25 years and i think giving them the opportunity to make up would make a lot of coronation street fans happy i mean a lot of people watching at the moment are probably like who's who's this or why, why should i care about it but for the long time fans that would be that would be amazing honestly that would, would be uh, it's one of those things though where you're like oh is it going to alienate a bunch of people but then it's like i don't care it's a special I episode i mean things like the ten thousandth episode but you could say is, that would alienate need, people or... yeah but you need to think about it from a marketing point of view where if you big something up and then people who are casual viewers are like i don't get it the... they're gonna then think well, this isn't the show for me then, because obviously I'm supposed to get something out of this I didn't. I think enough of the casual viewers would have an awareness of the importance of Bet to go along with it. Now, what wouldn't work necessarily, and unfortunately this has been resolved by now, is um, Audrey and Bev's falling out. Because do you remember Bev, Shelley's mum, came... That they're... Even Audrey's not big enough. No, 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 but um, when after Only Deirdre... for a historical yeah. story. I after mean, Deirdre for... died... Bev is the one that comes back and delivers the yeah. news and she'd been out of the show for, I don't know, let's just say 10 years. It's yeah, probably less Bev than that. Bev is 
Shelley's mum. Shel- yeah, Shelley's yeah. mum. So they'd had a falling out because uh, over uh, Fred Elliott, who they were both yeah. kind of into. And in that brilliant episode after Deirdre's death, or was it the Freedom episode? I can't remember, which was basically just a full on nostalgia fest for mm-hmm. the long term Coronation Street fans. The two of them rebuilt those bridges. And that's really all all I would want is to is to know that Bet and Rita are, are proper pals again. But the the likelihood of that happening is so minuscule and and getting smaller by the minute really isn't it unfortunately of course that wouldn't yeah i mean the other thing is not result it's not uh, unresolved but mavis and rita would be quite fun as like a nostalgic look back at um i I don't think it'd be worth half an hour but um no i mean there's lots of there's lots of pairs of characters in coronation street history which have got no kind of unresolved issues it basically is just me going who's not dead (laughs) yeah exactly i think for the purposes of this discussion we can't say we want to have you know uh we 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 need to have a leonard swindley and emily bishop well you know john's question was anybody from the last 60 years yeah and um you know oh gosh i wish pat phoenix was still alive Mm. um but She's not. <laughs> She's not. I, I tell you, I, I, another two that I th- think could definitely carry a two-hander would be Liz and Jim. Because I suppose that's a bit unresolved, isn't it? I mean, Beverly Callard left the show last year and who knows if she's going to come back to that. She, she said no, but she said that in the past. And and uh, Charlie Lawson has said that he would come back, but I think he'd want to come back only if Liz was in it. And, and the, the, they've both been kind of dancing around the idea of having some kind of final closure yeah. for this fiery passionate relationship um and and so i think that a a final final goodbye to liz which we didn't get last year because bev callard had to leave unexpectedly um just having a a, 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 what's one episode a two-hander of those going off together into the sunset despite everything that he's done and he really doesn't deserve it i would find that quite satisfying or like a proper a proper um real resolute like you could almost make this like and pitch it as a one-off drama special where anyone could watch it and it doesn't even have to be part of coronation street it could just be like watch this half hour play and it would just be jim and liz in a visiting room together Mm. in in prison yeah with like a guard an armed guard or something in the corner and then talking and and all the background would be given in the half hour through their conversation but you would get more out of it obviously if you're a Coronation Street viewer yeah but you can imagine just pitching that as a concept for a play Mm. you know a woman visits her her husband in prison and they talk about their lives but the ending my ending would be Jim going I can't live without you Liz and then grabbing the gun off of the prison off of the prison guard and then and then two shots in darkness and we don't know and it's a murder <laughs> suicide gosh yeah wow i don't know i tell you something. what then They've Beverly had Callard so would never have and... to worry about being asked back again because she'd that, be that's dead that's very true <laughs> but from what we've seen of them in their in the mcdonald's heyday which was for me is the 90s um they would absolutely be able to carry and do a very very good job yeah of, of, of that they, they, they were brilliant together um I think it would just be... This is one one thing that I've um, often thought about Coronation Street. Because I know they did the web episodes that were spin-offs. Mm. And I know they obviously have had, in at the very beginning of the run of Coronation Street, they had their um, Brothers McGregor and what, yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. it was called. But I really do think that there's scope for spin-off single episodes like that that just kind of show people who are snobby about Coronation Street. Like, actually, we've got some of the finest actors of their generation in this show, and this is what we can do. And you don't need to know anything about Coronation Street. Mm. It could work, or it could it end be a, up being like be the DVD specials, which are ridiculously expensive failure. Great. This is why you mm. have it, like, two-handers, because yeah. it's cheap, and you, have, you, you basically would shoot it on one set. Uh, having like a, a series of of two handers with that would old be fantastic. characters that, that would, would actually that would, really that, would, that would have been a really good idea for the 60th sorry everybody <laughs> well you know maybe the 65th or the 70th but possibly. that would actually be i tell you what i'd rather they spent money on that than 
building a pharmacy on the side of the wall. <laughs> I, I'd also um, wonder whether two-handers could be used, again, just thinking about unresolved issues here, to let the viewers know about characters that have maybe died and we're still kind of in a bit like, are they dead or not? I'm thinking like Hilda, because it's been a good, you know, what, five years maybe? I don't know, maybe even longer since Jean Alexander died. Yet in the, in the show, Hilda is maybe still alive the only people Looking that would really Dr. know or care Lauver. about it yeah exactly is um like sally and kevin who used to lodge with her and maybe kevin would remember and rita i suppose but having having like sally and kevin or, or you know i might always go to bring back irma oh. having her with maybe irma and ken maybe because irma used to be married to ken's brother david yeah but i, I don't know whether people would the, the general you know people who would watch this tell you what if, if you, really... you think if you think that bet's not gonna draw in the crowds then Irma ogden sadly <laughs> it's really really not really not. gonna be an attraction if you really really want to um baffle everybody have um a two-hander with Irma and what's her brother uh, Irma's brother trevor ogden is that you talking about <sighs> no i'm getting confused <laughs> <laughs> but so, something um, uh, no okay some, that's alright some, something with what happened to Hilda I'd really like to know just for a bit of a a bit of a golden feeling um, or um, who else like Bill Webster we don't know what's happened with him so do we have a, a, a two-hander with Kevin and Debbie maybe because they could probably handle it I mean we, we saw them two in the freezer together earlier this year and, and they had some quite nice reminisce bits um we don't know what's happened to Alec Gilroy. Um, again, Roy Barraclough has died, so the, the character isn't going to be coming back. Um, does do, If we have this two-hander between Bet and Rita, does that also act as some kind of finality for the character of Alec maybe mm. I, I don't I don't know maybe yeah that um, could be that could be her coming back to say. Yeah, because Rita, well, Bet was married to Alec and Rita was going to marry him, wasn't yeah. she? Up until he swindled the Duckworths back in yeah, 98. Yeah, you can just imagine Bet coming and going, you know, c coming into the Rovers and... Yeah. Or going into the... the it would have to be the cabin and nobody else would be around. Mm. And uh, her, like, what do you want? Yeah, I mean... I, and, need, and I, need you, I need you to put the kettle on, love. I've got something to tell you. Ha has Alec left Rita some money or something because he was a, oh, he was a bit can of you a imagine dealer, how wasn't spiteful he? um yeah another bet would be if if she got if rita got left everything and she's like oh you're always full on your feet didn't you yeah always always lay down this in the bed a, and then you the get your pay that we're day. developing here Gemma. I think well, wouldn't it be fantastic fan honestly this. because um really both of them were for their time a bit loose weren't they <laughs> yeah but rita made money out of it and bet ended up destitute mm. didn't she with you know a destitute from <laughs> with nothing but a slap yeah. and, a, and a and a leopard coat mm. to to show for it and really honestly rita has been so lucky her whole life but also her money's brought her nothing but unhappiness because everyone wants a piece. Everybody's always asking her. So that would be a really fascinating concept, you know, for Beth to come back, say, you got your money. You always get your money in the end with all your blokes, your parade of men. And then Rita be like there and they all died. Bet, how do you think I feel? I'm the only one standing all <laughs> these loves I've had in my life. And then Beth could be like, loves, don't you tell me about loves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm wanting to see this now. Me too. I think, I think this is my time idea that we've that we've been able to concoct I between know, but us. it's quite unlikely oh i know but they can just you know, animate it or something like they're done with some of the old doctor who stories Co Corey animations maybe maybe um what other ideas did i have i wrote down a few ones i really want to uh, know what happened to what happened with jenny's dead son yeah and that's a daisy, really good one because right daisy's been acting shady and vindictive and we wondered for a while whether she was actually breaking johnny and jenny up to get revenge for what was the son's tom. name tom who, who who drowned in a pool and we don't know the circumstances under which this happened but we know jenny blames herself yeah how much she is to blame is a, is questionable well we we had that um a bit of a, that emotional scene from daisy earlier this year where um, after, where she says that Mr Midgley, who we don't even know his name, her dad, after Tom died, he went really cold on her and as being the surviving one. So there's, 
it, there's definitely some unresolved history there. And I think that could be quite interesting. Or on the other hand, it could be it's Jenny, who's a character that we that we know and love, and some Someone other else. characters that we you know don't know from Adam. I think so I I'd, I'd, if I get to find out and flesh out Daisy a bit more, I'd I'd be fine with it. To be honest, she needs a bit of flesh. Because out. let's face it, something you know we know that we know Tom died and it's horrific, but Jenny really did go off the deep end, and yeah. it makes me wonder if there was something else that happened that we could make up mm. to make a really dramatic um revelation yeah maybe that that could be good that could be good um other unresolved stories that i thought of um when dr ali kind of semi killed is that ronan was his name wasn't it that gangster yeah. by pulling the stake out of him when was that like three like years or so vampire. ago and uh, throughout the, the 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 time after that i was like it felt like only a matter of time before the circumstances of ronan's death would come to light but they never did no and and ali went to prison just last year but that was for beating up Gary and he's gone and as far as we know he's not going to come back James <laughs> Burroughs doesn't seem in any particular rush to but no. <laughs> mate but they, they had a good they had a good little relationship they had a good bit of chemistry between Ryan Prescott and James Burroughs didn't they so but I, I don't know whether they'd be you know two-hander material no. being relatively new actors in the show I think that we've answered the question pretty well now. We've been talking for I forgot an hour. Oh gosh, we have, haven't we? Yeah. So I think that. Um... Yeah, I mean, just, okay, I just want to rattle off a few a few pairs that I don't know what there's there's no unresolved story here, but some other characters that, for if they could come up with a decent reason to put them together as a two hander, I think it'd be brilliant. David and Gail would be amazing as a two-hander because we've had 20 years of Jack P. Shepard's Jack David um, coming, you know, being at loggerheads with Gail. I think that they'd be amazing together. Um, I'd really like to see... I, I think Carla and Peter probably could manage a two-hander. I don't know how invested I'd be in it, but they've obviously got a lot of history. Nick, to get Nick and Leanne would be quite good. Jenny and Johnny, I think, would be wonderful because they've had some really great heart to heart scenes over the years and, and even the the last time Johnny was in the show was when they had that scene in the back of the robes back at the end of June um, and he, he's kind of disappeared into the ether now uh, so they, they could be quite good a Leanne and Toya two-hander maybe even something like an Ed and Aggie if we want to flesh out the Baileys give, them a, give the viewers a reason to care for them and I do certainly buy Ed and Aggie's relationship but I'd be quite fascinated actually to to get get a little bit deeper and maybe uncover and do I want another secret that they were kind of built on secrets weren't they Ed's gambling it wasn't exactly a uh, we're on the run and we're undercover uh, Aggie's um relationship with Ronnie I I don't know but it it could work or it could you know switch people off because as we've talked about before the the viewers haven't necessarily taken to the Baileys um so so Ken and Rita could maybe make a good two-hander um Kevin and Sally possibly I'm just thinking of these partnerships that have been together for a long time and have maybe earned the right to be the two handerers you've put it you've put Roy and question mark and I'm going to pitch you an idea go on then Roy and Hayley what now I know Hayley's dead what right but Roy is one of the few characters you could get away with doing this where Roy would be sitting there and thinking and deep in thought at the kitchen table, like looking concerned like he normally does. And then the door opens and Hayley walks in. Mm. And Roy looks up and she'll say, oh, Roy, don't I know I'm dead, but you just look so sad. I wanted to see if you're OK. Yeah. And then they just talk about whatever is bothering him. And she says, I'm sorry, I, I left you. I didn't mean oh, for it. Oh, gosh, that'd be like the Jack and Vera scene. But, but it would be, it would be... Stretched. Um, yeah, it'd be very long, but it would be like it's obviously this is part of Roy's quirky personality where it's coping mechanism. And it, and it might kind of become apparent as we as we go through the the episode that this happens quite often and Roy talks to Haley all the time and he could say, Oh, this is the first time you've ever talked back and she could be like, Oh, but it seemed really important, Roy. <laughs> you know what I mean? That could be really sweet and cool and also not unprecedented in Coronation Street because although you mentioned Jack and Vera, let's not also forget that Ron has appeared as a ghost after her death and we actually thought it was Hayley for a while. That's very true, that's very true. 
I mean, th- that could be interesting because Roy would obviously know that Haley's not there because he's yeah. so practical about things. Yeah, and, and he can say something like, oh, I, I didn't really realise how sentimental I was until my wife died. Maybe, maybe. I would love that. I know that it's would be weird. Quite lovely. But, you know, if, you, if, you, if everyone's going to accept Jack and Vera. Yeah. This is just what a bit a bit further on. And um it would also be great because we could mention it at Halloween and say, Oh remember that time Haley's ghost came back for <laughs> half an hour. Well I think that would be great. We, Honestly, we... I I also think it would be a really good controversial episode. We know that um Julie Hasman Halsh has wanted to come back and you know she would probably do it if they asked her. Mm. They gave her a really good script. They gave her a good script. And and um it would be something that you could pitch and and like advertise the heck out of it and people would tune in who had ever seen Haley. You know, if you're if you're talking about viewers who dropped off in the last twenty years, mm. oh yeah, I remember Haley, she was great. How the hell can they bring her back? This is making sense. Yeah. Oh, there's been quite a lot of good ideas here actually. We could, I hope there's some Coronation Street storyliners <laughs> or writers or whatever listening to this and can um can just steal just, them off just, of us. Uh, um, pay us a fee even better but... we'll sign them over to you like I said before <laughs> I've said this many times very reasonable rates <laughs> and we're all above board you know we've got the tax accounts and everything so I, I hope that, that I'd love them to do another two-hander at some point I, I don't want them to necessarily do so many that they stop feeling special but even EastEnders you know count of 22 feels like you know it's not a really common occurrence no, it's but been... it, it feels for these standards it's like yes this is something that we do mm. and with coronation street it's like no we don't really ever do that well you know there was that couple of times mm. it'd be nice to get somewhere in between that maybe because it feels like sometimes the fact that they haven't done it feels like they're resistant to the idea and i don't want them to be resistant to the idea or them to be able to do it to feel well, that the if, thing if, is, they, if, if it's beneficial for the programme, then you're, they you're can. sort of saying about, oh, being a bit more experimental and everything, but really, a two-hander is one of the most traditional theatrical setups you can have. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it really harks back to the theatrical origins of Coronation Street. Mm. You never know. A live two-hander. <laughs> live two-hander? Oh, my gosh, I won't wish that on anyone. who would be up for that? Although, again, that is all the players, isn't it? Exactly. Exactly. Wow. A live two-hander. A live one-hander. Oh, my God. <laughs> let's let's bring back Sir Ian McKellen to do a soliloquy about that time. He was a... <laughs> Lionel <laughs> Hipkiss. <laughs> Or Mel Hutchry, whichever one was his real yeah. name. He could do a two-hander with those two characters. <laughs> but in a conflict, uh, yeah. what made him? Um, okay, let's move on to the next question then. That's that's probably the longest we've ever spent talking about a listener question. So I don't know whether we'll make the uh, the next one a little bit shorter. But uh, Gemma, do you want to say who this is from and what do they want to know? This is from Gentle Dreams Edits on, I think it's Instagram, Maybe, quite possibly from social media I don't know whether that's who, real and the name. question is who have been the best parents and the worst parents okay so Corey's best and worst parents then um i mean that there's there's some names that there's are going to jump contenders. out there's some real contenders there are Let, let's do the worst first shall we because how about laura she's yeah she's pretty she's pretty, pretty bad, bad. S- selling, her, uh, selling her daughter at the river i think she's uh curry's number one worst parent and, at the moment and rick talk about absent parenting <laughs> um yeah rick and laura are pretty high up aren't they but they're yeah. not really the parents of a hugely significant character oh, and we also haven't moment. seen them doing any of the parenting all we know no. about is what kelly has told us about and she's a very unreliable witness if mm. you ask me yeah i mean th- th- there's going to be a little bit of um crossover here with one of our patreon episodes because last year on um around mother's day weekend <laughs> we did top five worst coronation street mums yeah. and, uh, and i think that very there's, festive i think that there's more work bad mums on coronation street than there are bad dads like characters whose you know main trait is being an awful mum I mean I mean there's lots of bad mums and bad dads but when I think of bad parents like really truly awful parents then my mind is drawn to the women more like your syllabatis that's bees. because women are expected to do most of the parenting and so when they fail it's a bigger betrayal in the eyes of society oh i think that, that sounds about right to me mm. i mean Scylla, Scylla brown is is definitely up there isn't she 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 she's, had her kids in care she good. was very neglectful of chesney 
Um, she she let people, including him, believe that she was dying of cancer that one time when she just wanted some money to go on a trip to Florida. I think um, she <laughs> she was she was brought in as because it wasn't Chesney. No, Fizz was the foster daughter of Roy and Haley, and then we find out about her brother, don't we? And then kind of Cilla is introduced that way, and she was uh, she was literally she was a the, built around the personality of I'm a bad mum so I, I think that she's probably like the worst curry mum there has been in my mind but then you've got also people like Jackie Dobbs as amazing as a character that is I mean Silla Brath the Batters was also a pretty cool character I quite liked her but Jackie Dobbs was um in and out of prison most of her life Tyrone almost had to raise himself um she was setting bad example all the time with all her thievery and everything she was she, she even stole off of Tyrone, lied to him and, and, and Molly when they were engaged as well. So she's pretty awful. Um, Tracy, she's uh, as, not a, as a long good, term, she? as a long timer, she's not been the best parent. I mean, even even um, like Steve, he went through periods of being semi-absent from Amy's life. But the fact that Tracy lied about who uh, Amy's dad was tried to sell her to the crop, uh, sell Amy to the croppers and say, "Oh yeah, Roy, you're the father." Um, she 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 almost sat Amy on fire one time during when the Victoria I mean, caught fire, but she didn't know she was there, so maybe you can't cut that against her. Um, she but she she I always felt that um, that Amy was often a bit of a thorn in 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 Tracy's side, but that she would sometimes use her as a bit of a bargaining chip between. Well, with Steve, um, which probably isn't the the best sort of thing for if you if you want to be a mum, um, and then and then you got people like um, Sylvia Roy's mum was was pretty awful, wasn't she? As again, she was a fairly yeah, not fairly beloved character, but when we kind of delved into the into her past and find about how she she left Roy, um, she just she couldn't accept his kind of oddballness when he was a boy and even when she came back into it she wasn't that that nice and then she then the ultimate betrayal as soon as Haley gets um, diagnosed with pancreatic cancer she's off she's off back down to Hastings again so um she, she's they're, they're kind of up there with the bad mums for me alongside you know Faye maybe who um who has this big storyline of teenage pregnancy but as soon as baby Miley's born she shifts ships her off with um Jackson, the dad, and never that really she's talks about the about the baby. Actually, a fantastic mum because she understood her limitations. But maybe, maybe she realised that she's just I, 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 yeah. I don't think I can do it. I'm not even going to bother trying. Let somebody else. Have I a don't go. think there's anything wrong with going. Oh dear. The Hodges I were a bit more a stable me, family unit. But usually, you decide that before you have the kid. Mm. Then you add your likes of um, Denise again, talking about absent mums. Well, I mean, Daniel, yeah. Daniel raised himself and he did a terrible job of it. <laughs> um, Kylie, who, um, she was she was another one who tried to sell... Um, sell a kid. Sell a kid. So she tried to pawn Max off onto um, Becky and yeah. Steve, didn't she? Um, although she did redeem herself somewhat. Um, and even like... Um, Zoe Tattersall, who we've been watching on the classic Coronation Streets recently, and I've been seeing in... Um, from 99 when she has this baby Shannon and she um she sells her to Judy and Gary yeah. and then comes back to try and get her but then even when she's got this baby living over at number four was it I think um or number two I can't remember neglect she she didn't want anything to do with her and then poor old baby Shannon ended up dying of her meningitis when Zoe was out clubbing that one night oops um and I think if Zoe had been a bit of a bit of a better mum possibly that might not have happened I mean you, you can't prevent meningitis by being there but um no I, I think things may have been differently if Zoe had been a bit of a better mother. And it was after the, the tragic loss of Shannon that she then gets ensnared by the um, the Etheric Foundation and the Cult of Nirab, which is where ITV3 are at at the moment. So, yeah, there's what been... What about Sarah? Oh, yeah, in Run and Runner's mum. Yeah, she's a bit of a... She's a bit of a wrong one, isn't she? And their dad... Who's um, dead? Yeah, Hassan. Yeah. Um, they were terrible parents because they tried to kidnap Rana and take her. Yeah. For was it for arranged marriage or did they just want to get um, her out of the country? I can't remember now. Um, I, think but, it, I think it was just getting her away from um, Kate, wasn't it? Well, yeah, and the fact that Hassan, you know, Sarah demanded that 
Rana lie to Hassan on his deathbed and say that she wasn't yeah. a lesbian. That's right, that's right. Yeah. That's pretty bad. Mm-hmm. Um, what about the dads then? There must be some bad... I, I think. Uh, uh, yeah, yes. That, that's our segue <laughs> on to the dads then, is it? Uh, I'm going to say Peter has been a pretty awful dad. He's been very, very absent from Simon's life. He's tried to kill him a few times by accident. Uh, accidentally set him on fire maybe a few times. Self-pityingly writing a letter saying that um, he's sorry that he's been a, da- a bad dad and then trying mm. to... Did he try to kill himself or was he well, just... Well, this is when... This was just during his he's drinking himself tried to death to phase, isn't it? He's tried to write Simon a goodbye letter so many times. I think someone should just take the hint mm. and emancipate himself. I mean... Peter's such a, a bad parent, such an absent father sometimes that you forget that he's even, he's even got a son because it's it's Simon, it's Leanne who's been left to raise Simon yep. most of the time and, and Peter's like, you know, swan back off to Portsmouth or whatever or, or been to LA with Carter or whatever for extended periods of time. He doesn't... He's, he's, got he's a, barely uh, lived with Simon. Yeah, barely. And, and I know he missed the first, what, five years of Simon's life because he lived in Australia, but you'd have thought that maybe some dads might want to make up for lost time when they're finally re, um, reacquainted with their, with their estranged offspring, but <laughs> Peter you, just never really bothered because he, was, he loved the booze more. I tell you who he would have gotten on really well with. Who? Oh. Harry Hewitt who, when mm. his wife died, shipped his daughter off to the orphanage because <laughs> he yeah. could not be bothered. Harry Hewitt's the original bad parent of Coronation he's like, Street, Yeah, he's it? like the original like top lad, no S given, smoke my pipe, drink my beer, and send my kid to the orphanage. I oh, thought it was great, wasn't it? I loved him. Loved Harry Hewitt. <laughs> but even when um, when he and Concepta moved over to Ireland, he's he was like, like you want to stay here, do you, Lucille? Yeah, go on then. I remember the great benevolence with which he told his daughter, his only child, that she, I guess I'll allow you to stay at home for Christmas, but you have to go straight back to the <laughs> orphanage. And it's not, I'm not even joking, he literally sent her to an orphanage. Like... And the sign above the above the um the door probably said for children whose parents are dead or might as well be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um I mean talking about like um classic, classic Coronation Street bad parents, um Frank Barlow was never He was great. He He, he, did, he was yeah, he was like the very he... traditional He didn't want anything. Don't understand my kids. No, because Ken wanted to better himself, go to you know, oh, you think you're so fancy everything. with your words and your university. Yeah, I, I think and to mother be a... will make dinner. Yeah, and, basically. And, and bloody well getting it, getting the bike out on the on the parlour floor <laughs> and cleaning think, the oil. I don't know whether if, if I was making a list of top ten bad parents, I'd put Frank Barlow on there, but maybe it's only because he well, was that... such a minor character in the grand scheme of but things. But also it he... was the big benign neglect that hallmarked the 60s yeah. and parenting they were all fathers. like that back then weren't they yeah, yeah. <laughs> remote um, pipe puffing father was like the, the hallmark yeah but then i mean look, look what happened to ken after that also i mean the whole of the barlow is just made line now i come to think of it it's made of bad parents isn't it frank yeah. at the beginning and then ken who as soon as, soon as valerie dies ships peter and susan yeah. off Bye, to scotland kids. go and live with your with your auntie or your grandma or whatever her face in scotland um and and he had nothing to do with um peter particularly for the first what 40 years of his life or so <laughs> 30 years maybe i can't remember that's what and i go say. to visit him every now and then but he kept his distance this is what i've always said i don't want kids but i would love straight. grandchildren i think ken got it perfectly right yeah Right, there you go, Peter. Off you go to Scotland. Come back when you're an adult and you can buy your own pints. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's he's maybe making it up as up for it by being a bit of a granddad to um to Simon and Amy, but and and I suppose now that Peter has been back in the show, I think Ken's done a bit of a better job of parenting Peter. Do you think that kind of is Coronation Street a a case study of generational neglect and how it affects you know generations worth of children i mean yeah. simon really is the epitome of generations of bad barlow breeding yeah it makes you wonder what um what simon would be like were he to um produce a child can't imagine would he be would he be the one to break the chain would he be a brilliant father he he's he's not got anything to base what being a good father is on exactly. has he? none of them have ever had a good or, role model really 
Nick Nick's more of a father in some ways to Simon than than Peter is. Yeah. Um, so you know, are you going to look at the Platts and say, compare the Platts and the Barlows? You know, the Tilsleys and the Potts. I think, I think there's been some some better some better parents in the in the Platts. But then the again, Barlows. you know, Audrey was terrible as a mum. Yeah, yeah, she was. I mean, she. You know, she reminds me of the mum in Mean Girls, where where she just wants to be like Gail's friend in a way. Mm. And she's so flighty and flirty and, and ditzy. I, I think she's fantastic, but she she I would not like have liked her to have been my mum. No, she even talks about... She kind of tries to excuse herself by saying, oh, I was just trying to develop your independence, I even Gail. think she did use the phrase benign neglect in the scene that recently we saw. I think, the, yeah, I Gail's think she did. birthday, I think, or where they were yeah, reminiscing no, I, about... I, I know what you mean. It's ringing some bells. She was just saying, "Look, you, yeah, because Gail was going. Gail, oh, she, no, she was right, in the hospital, and Gail's going. Oh, yeah, it was. Mom, it was then, the wasn't it? Oh, and she's like, look, you spend too much time worrying about the kids and you know talking to them and stuff. That's like that, you know, get old fashioned way. Just let them raise themselves. Mm. Get him to watch Bill and Ben. Well, Audrey also had the the massive secret that she kept from Gail for. 40, 50 years <laughs> yeah. about who her dad even yeah, was. Yeah, that's true. So yeah, not not the Is best. Ted parent, one though. of the best parents. <laughs> Uh, he... no. <laughs> Absent left a load well. of money. Yeah, he That's did. He, nice. he came in, showed up for like a few episodes over a couple of years and then disappeared off and left her a load of money. My favourite sort of relative are estranged, dead, rich ones. <laughs> <laughs> um, but do you think that Gina Gale makes a good parent? Because she's almost Curry's ultimate parent. She's not been able to cut she's the apron like strings, the most... despite the fact that her oldest child is like 40 or so now. I would say like she's one of the most defined by motherhood characters. Yeah. In a show... In which, you know, family ties are like the name of the game. Mm. But she's not very good either, is she? She's she's far too involved. She she cares about her children, which is good. She's a bit of a smotherer, isn't she? Yeah, yeah. She does also... She nearly got them killed. She, she did almost, yeah. She <laughs> uh, By no, you know, not on purpose, but she has brought danger to her family's door on more and than also, one occasion. And also, like... Her children have, like, basically murdered someone in the house. Mm. And no one knows. And then she nearly got them killed. And then yeah. her husband accidentally killed himself, trying to <laughs> pretend to kill himself. You know, I, I think that there's, there's a lot worse um, parents than Gail. I think, I think that... I think she's done an all right job. For somebody who's lived in a soap where there's just drama, drama. Every, around every corner. And, and, and one of your kids is David. Gail's mothering skills, like epitomise the phrase well you tried <laughs> yeah <laughs> she did you, you, you can't knock her for that I mean, uh, A for effort <laughs> yeah which, which... when you look back at poor um, optimistic 70s Gail with her little bob and her little sweet you know two bed up and down mm. and her f- groovy friends and her radio and bopping around and the kitchen table trying to be a groovy mum you think, oh, Gail, if only you knew what lies ahead. <laughs> yeah, if you could just push, press pause on your life now, just I'd move, probably do it if I were you. Just move to somewhere else. There's been some uh, parents, I thought, that kind of came in as bad ones but have redeemed themselves. So somebody like, you know, Bernie, who when she yeah. first arrived on the show, she she was one of these, like, oh, I'm making an entrance, me, I'm all hippie and weird. Um, and she was... And it it came across a little bit like, oh, here we go, here's another Scylla, here's another um, Janice, maybe, kind of character, more Scylla. Um, but and then she went away for a bit, didn't she? And I think since she's come back, she's been a lot more, a, bit, a lot more chilled and... Tried to bait a and, 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 and yeah, I mean, she did also try and um, sell um, pregnancy tests, isn't she? We, yeah. Yeah. Um, Stealing her daughter's urine. So she's for, for fraud. Uh, so I'm not saying she's the best mum in any way now, but I think she does. You know, she fights for her kids, uh, uh, not necessarily through purely selfish motives. Yeah, she's. I mean, similar to Beth in a way, and I would say that Beth, uh, as you know, as much as that character has been in a bit of a decline over the past few years, I wouldn't knock her parenting, and I think that. She was well, I mean, she was um, devoted to uh, Craigie. Well, she on still the is, basis but... of the produce, 
Surely Beth's the best mum. Because mm. Craig's like probably the nicest guy. Yeah, that that's true. If we're judging judging by how you know how the, about how the children have turned out. Yeah, who's nice on the street? He's probably the nicest guy. And we've seen her Almost parent- too nice. <laughs> <laughs> we've seen her parenting, oh, and we know that she was nice to him. So yeah. But then you get like you know James and Michael are quite nice. I think that I think that Aggie and um, Ed have True. must have done a decent enough job with them because they've managed to get to however old they're supposed to be now without you know murdering anybody. Yeah, yeah. I'm um, going back to the idea. Only of... knocked up one psycho. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Going back to the idea of redeemed parents. I think we need to mention Aggie, uh, not Aggie, Abby. Oh um, dear, she's who... <sighs> she was definitely. Uh... On the the worst parentness she was, and I wouldn't say that she is now. I mean, yes, she was she was on heroin, and and yeah, and, and yeah she was leaving her twin children for her older son to look after, and yeah, and, and yeah, she was absent for quite a while, and yeah. and all that. But and 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 yeah, she's now let the tw- twins get fostered away to Australia or yeah. wherever. But the other one's dead. The other, yeah. yeah. But, gosh, she loved her boy, didn't she? She loved her Seb. And that, um, that, it was yeah. so sad when he was there on his deathbed this year. And she kind <laughs> She's of... Now, now all, all three of her kids are gone. Yep. So she... Whoops. She has kind of failed as a mum. Karma. It's, I mean, it's not, it's not her fault that Seb <laughs> died. It's nothing that she did. But she's now gone from three kids to But you to start no to kids. think, mm, there's a pattern here. I know it's yeah. not your fault, but probably it's probably best of a not to try again. Although she does have Jack, doesn't she's she? Not, and actually, from what little, very, very she's not little, too old. from what very, she could try not, again. Yeah, she could start and get a fresh. She's she's our age, isn't she? Is Abby? Um, still got time. Uh, yeah, still time, still time. Um, from what we've seen, little we've seen with her and Jack, they seem to be bonding nicely. But it's very, very, I get very early the idea days. that it's quite remote. Do you reckon? Yeah. Two meter distance, at least. <laughs> Yeah. The length of one artificial leg. Mm. Um, Tim, also a bit of a reformed parent, so what we like about him now. But he is another <sighs> one who came in as a as a very absent father. He'd abandoned He's Faye crap. and her mum. He came in... Um, no, after... what have you put him on this list for? He, I don't think he's a bad dad his idea now. of supporting Faye is to, like, discover something sad that's happened to her and squint angrily but do nothing whatsoever apart from perhaps shout at somebody <laughs> i don't i think he's all right now i don't i, I don't have a i wouldn't say he's a bad parent but <laughs> i'm sure he goes to visits her in the prison all the time oh, Faye, how to read. <laughs> at least at least he's still living in the same town as his daughter and like oh, well, anna who's so a stabbed feeling and then buggered off somewhere to say oh yeah to come in for a location does not make a good parent <laughs> i'm not saying that um and another another reformed parent um, in my list here is stan ogden because um he was he was a bit of a um a bit handy with his fists in 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 the pre cory days i think it was the supposed to be days. as in before the ogdens arrived on the show we were supposed to believe that stan ogden was a worse parent than we saw him being in the show i mean irma so, okay. disappeared off didn't she 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 kind of estranged herself from the family changed her name to frida yeah um, good lass uh, and then um oh no no sorry that's she, not right her name, she, was, her frida. name was frida wasn't yeah. she and she turned her name to irma that's right yeah um just to try and distance herself from this angry um violent parent but and then, then he reformed himself so he only beat his wife yeah and then but by the end of it you know in his final 15 years or so he was just a nice decent lovable I think he was a bit too friendly like, chap in poor health to be anybody <laughs> i would still i would still i would still okay. put him on my list oh, of reformed right. parents um as for who else has been good parents i mean i'm thinking deb's been all right hasn't he and and he's actually you know out of all the parents that are still you know actively parenting children that need controlling he's doing a a fairly decent job of it at the moment as difficult as it must be for him to have to look after these kids that are going through teenage years there's no mum on the scene i think he's quite nice good dad yeah i'm getting dev i'm getting he's hilarious to watch there we go yeah but he's not. A, he's not a bad. I think dad, he's really he? good. You see, you we've seen him trying. Like we all do, but you've literally seen him trying to navigate some very difficult 
moments with his children. Yeah. And he's also supporting them. You know, he he when when he thought Ardy was good at golf, he you know oh, yeah, he, yeah. he he got him golf lessons. When he now Ardy wants to be a businessman, so he's put him in charge of yeah things. I mean, when when Ash's put um, their name on the side of the building. Yeah, when Ash's, just like the Trump children. When Ash's video went online, he did whatever he could to try and remove it from the internet, and that's uh, mm. that's no mean feat, is it? I don't know whether he actually. I don't think he actually succeeded, but. You can't blame him. He, he certainly tried. Asked but then also, that. when when he found out about the skin uh, lightening thing, he he kind of he completely lost it and tore down all of her posters know, and everything. But it this isn't is necessarily the, the best reaction. It's not. He's he's emotional, um, but it's for dramatic effect, you know. Mm. But he does try really hard. Yeah. Um, yeah, he, he's 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 a nice parent. I'd like I'd like somebody like that as a dad. If if I didn't already, you know. I have one of my own. <laughs> yeah, you're, yeah. You can have two if you like. I tell you who I liked as being a dad as well, Fred. And for the Aww. first, you know, five years odd of the show, Fred Elliott was Ashley's uncle, wasn't he? Yeah. With it, with a uncle with Fred. a dark soap secret that actually he was his dad. But the relationship between those two was really lovely. And when when Ashley got married to Maxine, Fred was really proud of him, wasn't he? But he was like completely protective of him and. Um, yeah, you know, it worked with him and everything, and um, you could you could tell that they had a a really special bond. One I thing I love, father and son. I'm a massive sucker for is parents being proud of their children. Yeah, like you can tell that Fred was really proud of Ashley. Yeah, especially him being a butcher and everything. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That that they were good. Um, would you say? I think Eileen's not been a bad mum. I was thinking of Eileen. She's quite like a cool mum, isn't she? Which is but she's now perfect down with um with Todd, isn't she? Yeah, but she's is that she's being a, a good parent? I mean, it's trying to get him to stand on his own feet. She, we know that she'll welcome him back again. She's won't not she? trying to get him to stand on his own feet. He's shunning him because he is a thief and a liar. Yeah, she's done it before. She's always welcomed him back. I, I think that that she has produced. Although I suppose if we're yeah if we're talking about judging the the parent by the quality of their offspring, Todd isn't you know the most well rounded human being. But the thing is, I I would say that he was up until he left to go to London and then came Something back evil. So I don't know whether we can blame Eileen for that. I it think was that the tube, you know, they don't smile at you in <laughs> London. A poor, I know, I know, cheerful we're... northern lad at the mercy of these evil southerners yeah, we're also refusing to say hello. Here. Yeah, I think from what we saw of of how Jason and Todd turned out. No, in the early days, she she did a pretty decent job. And then that was another single parent thing, wasn't it? You know, it is fair to say that you shouldn't necessarily judge a parent's skills on the you know, outcome because children have autonomy. And it's I know, perhaps I know. Not, you know well, there's a bit of nature versus nurture and, and also autonomy. As well, let's say, just right? answer this question once and for all because I know science is interested. Is it nature or is it nurture? I don't know. I think it's a bit of both. A bit of, bit of both is always our conclusion to this then, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, um, solve that one. Who else we got? Oh, what about Maud Grimes? Good parent? Oh, I don't know. She's kind of, you know, she's kind of a uh, bit of a, um, can I say, cock blocker. <laughs> yeah. A little bit. She is a little She She only wanted really... what was best for Maureen though, didn't she? Which wasn't apparently which, a role in which, the hay. Which wasn't, which wasn't Reg. She was a very... She was another nice, proud mum at the wedding. Can though. I just say, if Maud had had a son, this would have been a kind of psycho slash Bates Motel situation. Mm. Would you Don't you think? Living in each other's pockets. Maybe. Mother wheeling around, giving advice, <laughs> refusing to let them date, having put in a word in all the time. Maybe. Sniping and undermining their confidence. <laughs> Before we finish... This is, the, this is the thing, you know... Women turn into sex mad um, people lacking in self confidence, mm. and men turn into serial killers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, before we finish, then, let, let's go back to you know current current characters, so that we're not um, we're not we're not putting off people who maybe don't know even who know Maud Grimes is. Do you think that up until this point, Fizz and Tyrone have been good parents? It feels. I mean, you know, this is the thing again about can like you judge? A, can you judge by the solid. outcome? And um, there's a pyromaniac in the family. Mm. 
But that's just Kirsty's DNA, isn't it? Didn't, didn't they write it off to that? Right. <laughs> well, they tried to. I least. don't remember Kirsty setting many fires. No. Um, I think. Yeah, the, I think I, they I had think a nice they, little blended family, didn't they? Yeah, and they, they were, did. Um, they were, were happy until Alina came and ruined everything with yeah. her. I think they've been decent Romanian parents. And, and, and I mean, Tyrone put on best Christmas ever, hashtag best Christmas ever that time, yeah. didn't she? And hope about their cancer. See, now she's not got cancer. He's not interested. No, no. I think I think they've been fairly decent parents. Oh, I've, I, I, no, I, I said we were going back to it. I've just noticed I wrote this down. Ivy, good mum or awful mum? A pretty bad. <laughs> she loved her Brian, didn't she? Too much. <laughs> now, there uh, you go. See, Brian got stabbed to death. Yeah. But was he also a serial killer in the making? What? Why? Because she was overbearing. Yeah. She's, she's, if, if I think if you're going to, you know, you, you said that Gail is one of the characters that's most defined by being a mum. I think that mm. Ivy. I mean, yeah, Ivy was it, it, so, she's up there. was so clingy, like she couldn't even die. She came back as a ghost. <laughs> and once, once Brian had died, she still couldn't let him go on, no. could she? Um, okay, it's David, is he a good dad? That's a, that's a bit too early to we say, really. Know. We never see him with his kids. Would not know. No. Um, who else have we got? Uh, Sean? No, not really. He brought Dylan in for a few scenes this year, but... No, I don't... I wouldn't say, yeah, hmm. Was Johnny a good dad? Maybe. No. He had a secret daughter. No, he wasn't. Wasn't he? No, because he spoiled Kate. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, he did, didn't he? She's like, Daddy, you want to take Yeah, no, he was, Johnny was a terrible dad then, yeah. you're right. Uh, Billy? B- B- Billy's doing an all right parent in summer. Well, you know, they've now um, sequestered themselves, haven't they? Yeah. In their ivory tower. Yeah. So we'll never see them again. <laughs> Blanche was great. Oh, yeah. Well, she was, was just a great character all around, wasn't Blanche she? Blanche was a better grandma than a mum. Yeah. That's how I'm going to be. She, I can't, I'm, ch- I'm trying to remember much about... I can't remember much about what Blanche was like when we saw her in the 70s, but I think she... Um... What I'm going to do is I'm going to get really old and rich and then I'm going to sort of dangle inheritance in front of my neighbours, my young neighbours, and they'll all fall over themselves to so help me out because I think I'll leave it to them. <laughs> but I'm going to leave it to the Battersea Dogs home. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's going to be all your money. Oh, that's reminding me. Speaking of Battersea, I was thinking of Battersby. Not so great parent. Janice tried her best, didn't she? But Janice Les was, was um, um, uh, had a poor choice of, of mate. Yeah. And Le- let's Les not talk about not- Stella. Oh, gosh, yeah. Les was not the best father. He would, like... He didn't care about whether Leanne... You know, went to school or not? He was he was horrible to to he Toya. Was basically, they were basically surrogate wives because when yeah. Janice wasn't around, he's like, "Hey, who's putting D on t- table?" Yeah, yeah, not so great parent there. But you know, who who are we to judge? We're not parents at all, so we're we're fully qualified to judge. We're the only ones who can judge because we're what's the word impartial. Oh, that's <laughs> we haven't very been bogged true. down. We can't with say well they didn't do it the same way as we did. So therefore, they must be Yeah, bad. we can totally, we can look at all the different parroting styles and we can judge <laughs> all of them. And especially s- s- people who take their children to restaurants. <laughs> and people who have push chairs. Yeah. It's a well-known fact hate that them. childless couples hate push chairs. <laughs> and also babies of any sort. Yeah. Unless th- they're quiet. I think we're done with this question. It, 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 not, not as long a discussion as the last one. I don't one, feel but, like we, um, ha- we have a definitive answer, but I'd like to kick it to the viewers, listeners, viewers view, of Coronation Street. Yes. What, who's the best parent? I really, I mean, there are so many candidates for worst parent, but I think best parent is sort of a difficult one, isn't it? In, in, in what about sober. mummy and daddy... And Mummy and Daddy Taylor. Yeah. They're some of my favourite parents <laughs> to watch on Coronation Street, but I don't think they were the, the best. Granny Spellman, no. No, no. Um, I, the problem with this, it's something like a soap is, you know, everyone's going to make mistakes, aren't they? It's all about it's more people getting by and making mistakes. So um, I don't think anyone's anyone's perfect, really. Cause really, I think Gail was probably one of, the, one of the nicest parents, but it didn't work out. <laughs> no. But so. it's not her fault. No. It's bloody Richard Hillman's father. Horrible um David. David, yeah. <laughs> um yeah, we we have, we have no definitive answer but we we've we've toyed with a few and maybe listeners if you want to I write know, in and I've tell got us the answer. What? 
Toya and Imran. Oh, yeah, they, they did Best so well. Best foster parents. <laughs> did so well with Mason at Christmas last year, didn't oh, they? Oh, they did. He didn't die or anything. No. He made it through. And really, Christmas Soap Baby, almost certainly doomed. <laughs> but he survived. Mm. I'll tell you what, um, Roy and Hayley were actually... They, 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 they were, were quite nice, nice to see as, as foster parents as well, weren't they? I think, yeah. With Wayne, this with is the Fizz thing. And... Okay, right. We've discussed. We've decided now. This is like the difference between um, when you get your dog from the Blue Cross versus when you buy it from a breeder. Mm. When you get it from the breeder, you can do what the hell, how you want with it. You can tie it up outside and like use it for dog fights. Yeah. If you get it from the Blue Cross, they come round and they check your fences and they, <laughs> you know, oh, is this organic? Is this organic kitty cat or whatever? Adoption and fostering. You're not allowed to just willy nilly get on with it. No. They vet you. Yeah. So therefore, by by definition, you got far be good. superior parents. Yeah, yeah. We'll see how Toya and <laughs> I mean, look at um, with Kelly. Who Maybe was that's it? Whole murder thing. Who was it that um, Kelly? It was Kelly and no, Becky and, Becky and Steve, Steve went up at the same time as Anna and Eddie. Now, Eddie, not the best pet foster parent. As soon Anna, as Faye came along, he was like, "I'm out of here." Anna and Eddie actually got the got the kid, didn't they? Yeah, I think they only got they only got um, Faye because Becky and Steve turned up and okay. made them look better by comparison. Because <laughs> really, <laughs> if Anna and Eddie turned up and they're like, "Give us your kid," I'd be like, "No." I bake I think, good cake, says Eddie. I think I'll leave it in the orphanage. <laughs> Yeah, Eddie, as he wasn't so good, was he? I mean, although Gary didn't turn out so bad, he's Murderer. only been he's only been bad a few he's years. He's only murdered I'm one gonna, person. I'm not going to put that and on been, Eddie. And been responsible for the death of somebody else. <laughs> Gemma, we're, we're, we're I think we are done with this episode. Now you always say I'm, I'm, I'm terrible at um, signing off on okay, podcasts, well, so I'm going to pass this over to you to thank our. Question. You don't need to say any more. Okay. Thank you very much <laughs> for asking us questions. If you want to send us any more questions, you can email us at conversationstreet at gmail dot com. Please do. We are also on social media: Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Look for Conversation Street. We're on Patreon. You mentioned earlier a Patreon episode. There are like over twenty original episodes available for you to listen to immediately if you become a patron at the something tier or above <laughs> the something the bistro tier the bistro tier or above and you get things like previews to let you know what we're going to be talking about yes. so that you can comment and for let us example, know what you think this week we said that we were going to be talking about these and nancy wrote in saying that she would like to see imran and toya in a two-hander and also peter and carla and then as for p- p- parents she said that laura is one of the worst mums yep. and tracy and historically as well if you think about how she started out so yeah, thank you very much, Nancy. Thank you very much, Nancy. And we also release audio interviews early. Yes, we do. We have, we have, we have got a oh, whole 24 hours in advance on last week's Picky wow. Bins interview. I know. So um, I think that's it. So thank you very much for listening. And we'll see you later this week with a full length Conversation Street episode. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.